So, and Lucas Cannon, junior at Northgate High School, one of three. Um, I do origami, I've been experimenting. And, um, at one point, I was looking, I think it, it was, I got the idea from Lamb's book. He mentioned some uh, things about water bomb molecules and some math you can do, but he never got to what had happened if you'd have a molecule of different lengths and you wanted specific lengths. He, he talks about when you've got the crease pattern, you've got the circles, and you fill them in and you force the molecule to align to the correct circle uh, sizes. So rather than having a nice regular, just a regular water bomb, you have a molecule with uh, different flat lengths. You have such, such a thing as a gusset molecule, which has a little dent at the top, or a narrow head molecule, which has a shorter flap that's compensated outward. And they work, but I don't think they're quite as neat. And I, I, I just like regular water bomb molecules. So I decided to figure out um, what you need to get this to work. I just remember that right now. What do you think? So um, the point is basically to then uh, try to figure out how to construct a water bomb molecule of larger flap lengths, and then eventually figure out you can actually more add more flaps, and then preferably how to construct them. So you take a regular water bomb, you change the flaps a bit, and you get that. And yeah, it, it turns out you get equations like this, and uh, that's just an example of a gusset molecule, which is what we're really trying to avoid. So the water bomb base itself is a really simple traditional shape. Everything's the same, which is nice when you're pulling symmetric model like the water bomb itself, which uh, yeah, water bomb. Just in case the name gets confusing. So it also fits the definition of what we call a molecule, which is when you fold it up, all the edges in the beginning end up on one line, which means for circle packing and unaxial bases, you can put these next to each other as long as the flat uh, portions align and you can tile them and uh, they fit nicely and you can fold them up into a base which is why we really like molecules compared to other types of shapes. So we can just call it the water bomb molecule and the problem is how do, we, how do we change the flap sizes? And we go back to circle packing which is really you know, everything in do sort of involves now. But, um, you think of the regular water bomb base is uh, four circles. Each one of them represents a flat, they're all equal, and you expand them, and they end up in the corners, because the center has to cut the remains. Uh, Lang nicely explained how the whole circle pattern works in this talk, so this time I have so much over it. But, um, so you change the flat sizes to what you want, and I didn't count the length of these. So you change, change the circle sizes, you keep them tangent as long as they're together, you change each uh, particular flap so that the angle changes along with it, and um, it adjusts the height along. And uh, one thing is, note that there's no paper around the edge of this. I'm just ignoring that because if you're ever going to fold it, you just fold over the excess paper, and then you have the molecule. It's the important shape, and it would just be tedious to try to fit it in. So we're only concerned with the molecule itself. So if we take four circles and we put them together and we draw a line around through their centers. We can construct the angle bisectors. That's guaranteed to work. Lange shows in his book. And uh, we can draw the perpendiculars, which reach the sides. So um, we do that and we get something like this. And we, we just fold it. I, I did this that way. Um, however, if we do this, uh, the perpendiculars we draw out just go from the center and how we arrange the circles. And that's not necessarily the same circle sizes as, as the flaps we want, um, or the flaps are not the same as the circle sizes we want. We have this little gap, and we really care to have the molecule where this aligns properly. So the circles can move around, they have lots of different arrangements, and they have some freedom. In fact, there's actually one degree of freedom. So we really need some way to specify, to keep them apart, so we can choose anything like the diagonal between two, across the molecule between two circle centers or some obscure thing, but one really nice one is, I figured out, I, I just decided to see what I get if I just change the angle on the bottom left. And in fact, I didn't just do that, I added, because 
when you change the angle on the bottom left, it determines the height of the molecule, which sets the next flap. So um, I put one, I put it on a Cartesian coordinate system, put one at the origin, the next one on the x-axis, and let one vary. So essentially the two red lines, um, they vary in angle. The blue line has to follow, which means that the green segment um, is determined by those. So we let those move in. That looks something like that. And eventually at the end you have extraneous, uh, the, the center is outside of the molecule, which isn't really desirable. But notice that throughout the entire animation, the green segment only gets larger, which means that at some point it has to have the correct size, which you can actually solve for this simply, you um, label it a bit with lots of stuff, you find the coordinates of n, then you go through the height and find angle lambda and find n, and you take the distance between them. And you get this result. And when I found it in Mathematica, it took me forever to prove, but it, it is provable by a few identities. Um, but I noticed that it's really nice that you're cons what you end up with is all you have to do if you want to actually construct this angle is take the arc cosine of the inside. In order to construct the arc cosine on a piece of paper, um, all you really have to do is um, construct a right triangle, find the hypotenuse, and uh, just put one as the um, bottom side. And the inside is actually just both case and division, addition and subtraction, and that's all organically constructible. So if you're getting any four lengths, you're, you're guaranteed to be able to fold the angle just by organically itself, and you'll end up with the molecule. So uh, if you're given the flat lengths of these four on a piece of paper, you can uh, fold, find the angle, and then uh, later I'll show you a little short um, bit of how you actually fold the molecule if you have the angle. But that's guaranteed to be possible, which we could end there, but I didn't. I figured out for some reason I, I went the wrong way the first time. Not the wrong way, but it's actually a lot better to solve for the height, because then you can generalize. And every molecule has a height in this case. The gusset molecule, for example, which is why I don't like them, it doesn't have a certain height, there's a little dent in the center. A water bomb molecule always has one straight axis to the center. And incidentally, because the perpendiculars go out and uh, meet the edge, that means you can uh, inscribe a circle inside. So we can think of water bomb molecules actually as circumscribed polygons around the circle. And that's already somewhat of a studied subject in mathematics. So it just provides another way to think about it. But I just pointed it from a slightly different direction for just an origami implementation to find the actual circle size. Because normally you'd have the edge lengths rather than the flat lengths. Here you add the flat lengths to get the edge lengths. So it's a little bit the other way around.